Ahoy hoy and welcome back to Splore Some Spoilers. Now, when you find something splendid and awesome, this would then become Splawsome. So here we are back with the Sony and Marvel joining forces to give us Spider-Man Homecoming, directed by John Watts. We find Peter Parker back in Queens after his escapades in Captain America Civil War. He now has to deal with high school, the Vulture, and his internship with Tony Stark. Joined today and back is my colleague Pav. Hello, Pav. Hey, the team's back together again. I was expecting normal... What is it? You normally go... Oh, yeah. That'll do. No, that just sounds wrong. That sounds horrible. <laughs> and with the joys of Skype, we have Rob Johnson. Hello, Rob. Nice to have you back. Ahoy, hoy. Hey. Oh, it's so <laughs> nice to hear that. And move back to the Shire. It's our wonderful Stu. Hello, Stu. Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> you can almost feel the uh, positivity in you the can. voice there. Indeed, you can. Right, as always with Splore Some Spoilers, if you remember back, I, God knows how long ago it was when we did our last one. Um, I go around the room and we ask for a toes up rating. Um, so I'm going to start with Stu. Oh, why couldn't you start with, start with Rob? I want to see what Rob says. No, <laughs> no, no, we're going with you, Stu. All right, um, two and a half. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Rob? Four and a half. Pav? Three. And I'll go four. So we'll see wow. whether people change. We're all a bit of variance there, aren't we? A bit we? of a variance. So I'm going to go straight to Stu. Why two and a half? Well, see, now when I was actually talking about this film with someone yesterday, I kind of scored it seven and a half to eight, which would be obviously on your toes sort of three and a half to four. Yeah. But the more I think about it, the things that annoy me about this film annoy me further, more. So I've taken my score down. Okay. And Rob, you obviously really do like it, like it a lot. I think I'm in the same camp as you. What was it you mainly liked about this? Uh, I just, I loved the movie. I, I, you know, went into it really not expecting much. And when it was announced, uh, kind of a, as an addition to that big Marvel slate a couple of years ago, it was like, oh yeah, well, I'll go and see that. But I actually, I, I couldn't believe how much I was enjoying the, the movie all the way through. I thought it set up Spider-Man really well in within the MCU. Uh, and it makes me excited for Spider-Man again, where see him, for, yeah, you know, see the last again. two couple of movies, it's like, oh God. Mm. So yeah, loved it. Yeah, I mean, and Pav. Right. Three. In Civil Middle War, of the road. in Civil, well, I was very close to a two and a half. Right. And there are a lot of things that I liked about the movie, but there are a lot of things that I think I'm in the same boat as Stu that that I that I either didn't get, didn't understand why it was in the movie, or just didn't like. Right. I loved Spider Man in uh, Civil War. I thought he was the probably the best bit of the whole of Civil War. Right. But my problem with this movie... Hey, Stu. Hello, there he is. <laughs> the problem Hi. with this movie is that it felt more like a Sony movie than a Marvel movie. Oh, really? And that was the thing. And I went in, I went in opposite to Rob. I went in really, really looking forward to this movie, really excited, and came out quite disappointed. Mm -hmm. And for me, with a Marvel movie, is I, I was... I was just really disappointed overall. And we'll go maybe go through the details of why I was disappointed well, I think a little bit will. later on. But I just, I just, there were bits of it that, don't get me wrong, it wasn't Batman v Superman bad. Right. Um, but then even in that case, I watched it again, Batman v Superman on Sky, and didn't mind it as much as, you know, the first time when we watched it and we tore it apart, mm. didn't we? I was just, I was just disappointed. I was just disappointed. Okay. What, what about this you? is it's a million times better than Batman. Oh yeah, yeah. don't get me wrong. Like I say, I didn't I didn't come out of there thinking that it was like that there were there were plot holes, you know, like Batman v Superman, and there wasn't a Martha moment in no. in Spider Man like there was in Batman v Superman. But uh, well, I mean, a Martha moment in this film. Oh, we'll get to that in a second. I was going to say, as soon as the opening uh, title started and you had the the camcorder of footage, you know, the video footage of him making his little documentary, it just, it had me. I just really enjoyed that. The whole behind the thing of Civil War, seeing back there and then back with Tony Stark and everything like that. I just thought it was fun. The, and the fun was going to start and, and it didn't stop for me. I really enjoyed it. The Marvel bits of it, 
I really thought were fantastic. The start of it was fantastic. It's when it veered away from the bits that are part of the MCU. When they're trying to set up their own... Sony are trying to set up their own Spider-Man universe. That They were right. the bits that, that it examples didn't work. Examples for people listening. Examples. Course. Okay. Well, although I suppose this is linked to MCU. But the fact that they've given him a suit that basically has turned him into Iron Man. So he's got a suit that he is talking to like Iron Man talks to his suit. So instead of him using his spidey sense, which I know is one thing that, that Stu is like, where is his spidey sense? He's now talking to a computer, which makes me think that Sony are trying to build him up like their own Iron Man. Right. And that, that was the bit that I thought, well, why is he, he, all he's doing is talking to his computer in his suit. And I don't need that. He needs to be just him doing it by himself. That was one one of my quips. I don't want to. I want to. Don't want to monopolize the time. Okay. <laughs> Rob, what bits were? Uh, well, I, I, yeah, I'm interested to hear what you say about when you say the Sony bits because, as I understood it, um, Marvel had complete creative control over the movie. Obviously, Sony had to approve things, and they they were involved in the casting and stuff. But in terms of the production and the writing, it is an MCU movie. And I, I think that's and also like things like the Spidey sense. If like the Kevin Feige and um, John Watts have said they they wanted to because they, they felt that that had been done, you know, ex, it's been done to death in the last few movies of Spider Man. It's one of the things, it's same as not having the Uncle Ben yeah. and the origin. It's to differentiate it and. I thought it was kind of it was a fresh take on it. We didn't we don't need to see those things. And I actually thought it was I thought it was one of the most M- MCU Marvel movies there's been and it's actually it actually did what I've wanted these films to do for ages in terms of we have more than one Avenger in a non-Avengers movie apart from Civil War. Um so things like Iron Man 3, I, at the end of Iron Man 3 I was like why is there not an Avenger come to save the day at this, things like that. that I've wanted for years and it's, it happened in this movie and the references throughout, even though, yeah, maybe they're a little shoehorned in, but at the same time, I, I dug it. I, I love all the, the kind of Easter eggs and I thought there's quite a lot in there. And it's always nice to hear Jennifer Connelly. Oh yeah. I'd rather <laughs> see her than uh, yeah. hear her. <laughs> so Stu, what about the things that didn't work for you? Well, I understand what Rob's saying about Spidey Sense and you know, the directors and stuff saying that they didn't want to go that route, but that's an integral part of the character of Spider-Man. Like even people who aren't comic book fans know Spider-Man has Spider Sense, and it just irritated me that they took it out. I'm with you, Pavo, that the robot suit just didn't work for me, um, and there are other things as well which we'll get to during the see when you'll go through the plot. Certain casting as well um, wasn't okay with. Well, obviously, the film started uh, introducing you the bad guy, um, Michael Keaton, the vulture, quite early on. And I thought his introduction was really good I, with the whole New York situation, the aliens and the scavenging, obviously, fitted quite well with Vulture and updated the vulture quite well. Mm. Was, that, was that a problem for you, Stu? Michael Keaton? Was he one of the castings that you didn't like? No, I mean, I love Michael Keaton. Uh, Batman, obviously. Birdman is one of my favourite films. Um, he was fine as the Vulture. It was just... There was lots of little things in there which I didn't pick up on because I'm not a Spider-Man fan, per se, that I've looked up and there's about four or five different characters that are in there as, like, the names have been given to characters so they could potentially be in future films. But things like um, Flash Thompson, for instance. The oh, my God. Complete rejigging of that character. Now, I'm not a Spider-Man fan, but I know that Flash Thompson is a big jock that bullies Spider-Man. He's not some rich... I, I, I really don't want to be the person that goes there, but he's not some rich Asian dude who they've literally just cast in that role for a bit of ethnic diversity. Mm. I couldn't believe, if you look at... Uh, I'm going to get his name. Tony Revolori. He's the in Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah. You look at him compared to that Joe Magnaliello, whatever his name is, from uh, the first the Sam Raimi Spider-Man. I couldn't believe that that was Flash Thompson. When they, they said, oh, Flash, stop it, whatever. He's the weediest little guy that, that 
I mean, Peter Parker could knock him for six if he wanted to. I couldn't believe that that's who... I mean, it's it's total miscasting for me. He, he, never, he never once made me feel that he was somebody that was going to be a threat to Peter Parker in regarding to picking on him or being a bully towards him. It just didn't that that just didn't work for me at, at all. But do you think that's the that's the aim that they were trying to get? I know that that's the character. I mean, I, I didn't even cross my mind when I was watching it about him. I just thought he was an oik. <laughs> well, he's Flash Thompson, so you yeah. think that he's he's the guy that is going to be he's the the bully. He's the guy that's going to make Peter Parker. I'm assuming make him sort of go. Well, look, I've got this power. I could knock you on your ass if you mm. wanted to. He could do that whether he didn't have the power, you know, the Spidey power at all. Rob. Uh, well, if you think about it, um, not only have we had three iterations of Spider-Man, we've, this is now the third iteration of Flash, and every single character, and I think what they were doing was to go and try something different, try something that wasn't expected. Uh, I, d- I had no problem with it. I think he's still a bully. He clearly is a bully, the whole Penis Parker <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, it, to me, it didn't bother me at all. Um, okay. And I think I think they're just they have to do something different with each character and we can talk about uh, Mary Jane and the whole MJ thing as well but uh, oh god in terms of the (laughs) cast I think I think it it was a there it's I think it's a very current movie I think if you go into a high school in New York the sort of faces that you would see would be similar it felt very authentic to me um yeah and yeah I, I, I don't necessarily need to see the jock flash Again for a third time. No, it's no, exactly what I thought. I mean, I can't even remember in the ama- in the Andrew Garfield Spider Man, the Flash Thompson character. I honestly, honestly can't remember that character in that. Mind you, those movies are quite forgettable. So <laughs> yeah, but but I mean the the MJ thing. I, pro- I don't know whether Stu, that's the moment you're saying is the Martha moment. But that yeah. rem- that reminded me of the Robin moment in The Dark Knight Rises. Right. In the fact it was so inconsequential is that the right word yeah it just didn't it didn't it's just thrown in there it didn't make i mean why that character was there in the first place it didn't make any did you not like that character i I thought it was just pointless i thought it was absolutely pointless every time she's there she's got a face like a slapped ass and it just like it it was she was only there to make that payoff of that mj thing at the end when i thought really you're just gonna shoehorn that in at the end i just didn't i didn't buy it one minute I thought she was great. <laughs> I'm with you on that, Rob. It didn't bother me I thought at she all. was great. <laughs> uh, we've never had such a polarising... No, I'm, I'm with Rob view, on that. It just didn't bother me at all. Didn't well, not that I thought she was a really real character. Yeah. and she, I thought she was funny. And, and uh, yeah, she was, she was just, like, observing. I think they're obviously... if All the characters and everything with this, uh, it's... And you, Stu, will probably hate all this, but it, they are clearly setting up, and they've said Harry Potter is the model. So if you think about that, they are they are thinking five to seven movies of Absolutely. this whole thing. I completely so agree. That M, I think the whole MJ thing. I, I just actually just before this, I read an article saying uh, uh, from Kevin Feige saying that she, the MJ is not meant to be Mary Jane. It's just a thing that they threw in there. I think they're clearly setting that, that she's obviously going to be that type of character but it might not be for another like two or three movies Mm. and and then the impact of it will be so much more when you've spent four five six hours with these people so you know what it reminded me of it reminded me of lost right i don't know if you guys watched lost but obviously after the first series of lost fans came out and they said everybody's dead it's all purgatory that's the whole thing the makers of the lost said no that's rubbish that didn't happen turns out in the end that twisted a little bit but yes they are all dead right this and then when we came to this film Spoiler uh, Zendaya, <laughs> yeah. Zendaya is it the actress yeah plays yeah Michelle? she came out and she said I'm not Mary Jane I'm not Mary Jane and the makers of the film come out and go no there's no Mary Jane and literally that was from my personal point of view is that was what she was intended to be and they then changed it and twisted it to have that cute little quirk at the end and it just pissed me off yeah it's the Benedict Cumberbatch isn't Khan moment, isn't yeah. it? It's where they're all saying that. and But I just thought it just it seemed like, I mean, you're absolutely right, Rob, that they could do that and they could pay it off in a couple of movies' time. So they didn't need to stick that in. She could have still just been Michelle at the end 
when the movie finished, everyone's sort of going, oh, I wonder if that is MJ. Or maybe, maybe not. But to do that and go, oh, actually, people call me MJ. I thought it's just just get rid of that line and I, would have, I wouldn't have been quite so <laughs> pissed off like, like Stuart. But, it, 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 it did make me pissed off. So I, I just shook my head at that moment. You, you don't know that it might, it, that might be some weird Sony contractual obligation that you have to have the cat. He has to have a love interest or something. I, I, who knows? But that might be something to do with that. That's yeah, why it was. Think, a, do you think this series will get another seven films once it goes back to Sony? Well, the thing is, they've already said that, well, I think it was Kevin Feige again that said that it's a five-movie arc for um, Spider-Man. But then you've got to take into account that we've already had two of the movies. He's in. He's going to be in both of the Infinity, um, Wars, Infinity and... War, the Avengers movies, and then they've already greenlit Spider-Man 2, or Spider-Man Homecoming. And, and three, I think. Two. So, think so, that. so that's five or six movies anyway. And they've said that, Obviously, nobody knows what's going to happen in Infinity War Part 2. It probably won't be called that. But I think Spider-Man's going to have a much bigger role in the Avengers once that... Or, you know, once the, the, the story... Ro- That's why I think they're setting him up to be the next Iron Man. Because I think that Tony Stark isn't going to make it out of uh, the two Avengers movies. Also, Homecoming 2 apparently st- is literally minutes after... Infinity War that's, too. That's right. Yeah, no, I read that. But you're right. They are. He is. There's no doubt. He is the Iron Man, Tony Stark, for the next phase of the MCU. Yeah, he is. But I mean, the bits, the bits that worked for me were the bits with the interactions with Tony Stark. Right. They were the bits that I thought that that really popped for me, and really, and with Happy, you know, that whole yeah. start. But the problem that I had with that is that everything that was good in the movie, we've seen in all the trailers. Yeah. What's well, so all the set pieces? It, it was just every little bit. I thought, well, I've seen a little bit of this, and I've seen a little bit of that, and I've seen a bit of that, and that was the thing that I think was the one thing that really, really made me feel down about the movie was that it felt like I'd seen all of the set pieces in it. Not obviously in. But its then entirety. that happens with a lot of movies, doesn't well, yeah, it? You, I'm, you I'm not see... saying it's right in any of the movies. Yeah, but you see that a lot. I mean, the whole set piece in Washington at the Washington Monument, I thought was a great set piece. You know, the whole bit when he flips back over the helicopter and that and comes back through. I actually, you know, watching that on the IMAX, I thought, wow, that is just a great set piece. You know, and you felt wary when he was looking down and the height he was at and having the wobble, I, I felt was funny. And I just really, uh, uh, <coughs> really, really, really enjoyed those set pieces. Again, on the ferry, people saying, oh, it's just like the uh, subway bit on Spider-Man 2. I don't care. I just really enjoyed what he was doing and the whole bit with Iron Man coming in. Just great entertainment and great comic book right. to me. So what, what's everyone's views on the quality of the CGI? Stu? The, now, I actually didn't mind the CGI in this. Um, I don't know. If, I'm assuming you've all seen Wonder Woman. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The CGI in that, for me personally, was god-awful. Uh, every t- and the, don't even get me started on slow motion. But the CGI in that film, every time Wonder Woman jumped up in the air and was do it was really bad. Uh, I don't know what they were doing and where they spent the budget, but it certainly wasn't on CGI. But I, the CGI, one thing I liked about Spider Man's suit in this, and I don't know if Rob no can remember. I can. Were the eyes? Did the eyes react and move in the Amazing Spider Man? No, in this one because I really like that in this. No, the the eyes were introduced in Civil War. That was the first time right, okay. they moved. Yeah. Mm. And what did you think in the Amazing it? Amazing Spider-Man Two? He had really big eyes, and that was one of the best things about that movie. That the <laughs> the mask actually looked really good. Yeah. So, what do you think about the CGI, Rob? Do you have any problems thought, with it? No, I thought it was fine. Nothing popped to me that I, uh, yeah, I thought was weird. I the I didn't when he was in his homemade suit. I I, I, I don't know. I didn't like that as much, but I because I think they, they've really got the suit right. I think it looks really cool. Mm. Neil, well, I, I didn't have a problem with the CGI. I, I was listening to John Watts talking today um, um, on an interview and saying that uh, obviously it was a lot of it's motion capture. Did you know that? Right, okay. rather than just CGI. Right, and uh, they actually did some real footage, like the bit where he was sat up on the um, fire escape, right up in the height, eating the sandwich. That's real. That's not CGI at all. They they really filmed that on a harness and everything with Tom Holland. And I just think it looked really good. Really, really good. And it's the first time as well that the 3D quite... Uh, I don't know whether... You, did you watch it in 2D or 3D, guys? 2D. 
2D. Yeah, I watched it in 3D and it actually complemented it. Right, okay. And as, and I'm not a 3D fan at all, but it really did work quite well. So but especially I, with, like like I said, the Washington Monument bit on the IMAX 3D was really, really effective. I actually felt high with him and it worked really well. So I did get the, the, the that last battle felt a little bit Transformers for me where it was like dark, loads of stuff going on. You couldn't really see what was going on when it was just spider-man mm. and the vulture and they're just tapping well, uh, with the with the plane up and, on the plane yeah it just it just i don't know I, I don't know whether i'm getting tired of of superhero movies maybe could that be. could be what it is i i think it's what you said earlier because it, it's everything was in the that very first trailer yeah like literally you i you knew the very basic three act structure and mm. what the I saw well that the thing with the fairy is going to be sort of midway through the airplane thing is going to be at, towards the end he's obviously because of Iron Man has to save the day at the ferry he's going to take the suit back and it's all it was all literally all in the trailer the only bits that weren't were all the the high school stuff yeah um so yeah maybe it's to do with that mm. I don't know Stu? but I, I think oh, sorry go on Rob oh sorry just just quickly, I think maybe that the marketing was handled by Sony, possibly, and they were because those trailers didn't really feel like your typical Marvel, Marvel tra- trailers. No. Compare compare the first Spider-Man trailer to the Thor Ragnarok trailer, which is a masterpiece trailer, I think. I agree. And you don't, you don't, we still don't know what's where those bits come in the movie or whatever. And that first Spider-Man trailer, like already, I've seen way too much. Mm. Stu, so maybe. Well, I'm a bit like. Well, I'm not a bit like, but I'm very much on what you just said there, and that I'm just bored of superhero movies. Um, going back to like last year, Batman vs Superman wasn't very good. Didn't like Suicide Squad. Doctor Strange was all right, but it wasn't great. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy two, I didn't particularly enjoy. I could see Rob disagreeing with me on that one. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll have to take uh, take yeah. uh, Ambridge with that one. That for me is my movie of the year so far. And I was looking for a Wonder Woman was okay, but had problems. And I just was hoping that this film was going to reinvigorate my passion for superhero movies, but it didn't. And literally the only thing I'm looking forward to is Thor Ragnarok, because that trailer, as Rob said, is probably the greatest movie trailer ever made. And that's why I have my two-year-old son knows it word for word, (laughs) because I've watched it so many times. But just compare these movies, though, to a couple of years ago. They are streets ahead of what, what we were watching. Oh, yeah, I'm not... I'm not I mean, maybe... You, the quality, it's just the quantity. I'm just bored. But we're going we're gonna to get Avengers Infinity War. It's actually going to be a thing. It's, that's right. You know, well, and Justice so, League. I mean, what I'm, a time I'm, to be alive. I'm hoping that Justice League is going to be... That, that you know they've, they've they've obviously done well they've so say done a lot of reshoots that is going to uh, be a lot Justice more. Justice League's going to be a clusterfuck. Is that what I you reckon. think? I, I I have high hopes and I've I've watched those trailers and I get excited but I get excited in the same way as before Batman vs Superman. Yeah. Do you not think that the I, advent of Joss Whedon coming in might change things with Justice won't, League? He won't be able to do any. He won't be able to do anything on it, will he? He's he's got to adhere to the. The tone, every I, I, I think that it will be a lot more enjoyable than Batman versus Superman because they've obviously learned the lessons. Um, but it's ah, well, who knows? Who knows? Because Wonder Woman was by far the best DC movie. Mm. Who knows? And the thing is, uh, I'm saying that I'm I'm tired. I'm getting tired of of superhero movies. There's been four superhero movies this year, and I've loved three of them. Yeah, it's just that this one didn't quite work for me. But then saying that, apart from Guardians. This was the one that I was probably looking forward to because right. I've enjoyed. I mean, the Sam Raimi Spider Man first two Spider Man movies were, re- were were really really good, mm. and I really held up hopes because I think they've got they've got the right Spider Man with this one. I think Tom Holland is a perfect Spider Man. Yeah, I think he's fantastic. He's a perfect age, and I think it goes with what Rob said earlier on that they're setting it up that they want him to be Spider Man for a long time. He you know he can be Spider Man for a good. 10, 15 years and still not look mm. like he is in his mid 20s, early 30s, or whatever. He can, he can carry that on and go into phase four of Marvel. But I was just, I don't know. I just come out of there just not as pumped as I was when, say, for instance, I watched Guardians of the Galaxy. There was something about that movie 
that I've seen that movie twice now and both times it gets me right e- e- emotional whereas there wasn't anything I thought the best parts of this movie was the very last shot when Aunt May and sexiest Aunt May ever yeah right um, is stood in the doorway when he's got his costume and she goes <laughs> what the fuck and then it stops and it also had the best uh Sting at the very end, what, at the, the Captain very America, end. and that's the first time I've seen a, a any kind of sting in a cinema where people actually clapped. Yeah, um, people had that we had applause in my screening, and there wasn't that many people there, but they everybody laughed and people even clapped at that one. I thought that was a bit of genius. That it was one so then. funny, it yeah, was so funny. It really was. Did you like the sting, Stu? Uh, yeah, I mean, the last one with Captain America, as Pavo said, was great, and it kind of Trolled everyone, didn't it? And the other one, I mean, what what do you think the sort of the first thing was setting up? Is that well, setting up? It's a villain, a, isn't it? Scorpion, well, I reckon. Yeah, I think that's the, that's what it said. He apparently has got a scorpion tattoo on yeah. his neck, and that's that's the guy, isn't it? Yeah, scorpion, setting so. up scorpion. So, and it's uh, Donald Glover, obviously, in it. See, I, I didn't. Th- I, I was thinking, let's see Donald Glover. Let's see what he's like because obviously he's he is it, he is Lando Calrissian. Yeah. But I thought I didn't think his acting was particularly good. But he's another one that's being set up as a, a character. I can't even think off the top of my head what's the character he's supposed to be. Well, isn't another his villain, isn't or... his nephew supposed to be that Miles... the Prowler? The Prowler. The prowler. That's it. That, isn't he got something to do with Miles Morales or something? Yeah, he's yeah. That's his nephew. Yeah. His nephew. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Rob, did you like the stings? Um, yeah, uh, well, I thought they were okay. Right. I, 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 with those things, like, I really want to see, I wanted something from Infinity, you know, I was never going to get it, but I want, I want to see something, you know, in the past there's been amazing ones and there's, basically they're trying to set up, you're right, it was a scorpion, but it also establishes that uh, Vulture's still around um, and they are, Sony's been wanting to, make a Sinister Six movie forever. Mm. So it's it's setting that up. Whether that's in the cinematic universe or it's in the Sony universe, which is probably something we should talk about because that's where it's all going to unravel and they're going to ruin everything. But, yeah, I, you know, it's it, it did what it did. And the end one, yeah, it was funny, but it's like at the same time, I would have loved to see something. And you would, have, you would have thought, considering that Thor is out in November, that they would have put something in there just as a but little... They, yeah, they're 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 keeping it Sony centric, aren't they? Yeah, they're keeping it very spiked. Then the whole the whole end of the movie where he he didn't become an Avenger and he's, you know, it's I think it's all it all ties in with that. But talking so of the really, comedy, like the last thing, I mean, there was great comedy throughout. I thought the bit when he was running through the yards and then uh, Ferris Bueller was on, I thought that was a lovely touch. It actually made me properly laugh and little touches like that. I thought there was some great humor in there. Yeah, yeah, when he has to run across the golf course. Yeah, well. yeah. It's was, it was really funny. Yeah. So yeah, I like those sort of touches in a film, you know, okay. in film jokes. But So in regards to what you just said, Rob, obviously Venom is the thing that Sony are going to be working on. And that I've heard contradicting reports that, yes, Spider-Man's going to be in this universe. No, he's not going to be in it. Because Tom Hardy has been um, cast, as Venom, cast yeah. as Venom now, isn't it? What are your guys' thoughts in regards to... I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. You can't have a Venom movie without Spider-Man being in it, or you can't have any of these. What's the other one that they've got? The um, There's another movie, isn't there, with the... the I can't remember who it is, no, perfect, uh, <laughs> perfect mind fart. I've completely forgotten. The, the Black Cat and... That's the one. Yeah. Something like that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but there's all this... But they, they're saying that Spider-Man's not going to be in this universe. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't know enough about the Venom, what they're going to do with it. To, I don't to... think I don't think anyone really knows. And they've said contradicting things because Amy Pascal, there was that whole, that famous clip where she says that he'll be in the universe and Kevin Feige's like, what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't think Spider-Man will be in those movies. I think they're going to, they'll reference him. I think the closest thing we can equate it to is like a Mar- a Marvel Netflix show or something like that. Because they've they are that that Venom movie is not in the MCU unless they pull out a whole they they cha- they see how much money this has made and said right okay we'll give it to you you can make it Marvel and even then it won't be part of their plan so who I 
or uh, you know is it going to be set 10 years in the future or so mm. who hell knows i think it's very it's very dangerous what they're doing it's very confusing to a, a an audience and they're clear because sony obviously wants to make as much money as they can from this property but what they need to do is just you know slow and steady just drip feed this stuff that's right well they haven't then, got they haven't got a good um past record have they exactly. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. So it's that's what I'm extremely wary of. And like Venom, it's like you don't need Tom Hardy to play that role. You know, we no one knew who Tom Holland. Well, you you might have known who Tom Holland was, but he's not a star. Mm. And now he's he is Peter Parker. So you don't need. And it's that's the old that's the the trap. A lot of these, if you're talking about superhero movie fatigue, a lot of them have fallen into that mistake of casting a huge name in the and then it outshines the character venom should be about but like you say you can't have venom move out of spider-man so how the hell are they going to do it yeah. but it's been it's a script that's been kicking around for years and years like kurtzman and Orsi wanted to make it years ago so it's it, and which is the same thing that happened with batman versus superman that was a script that had been kicking around for years and they eventually make it and it's a crock of shit so mm. i think it's a they the, the danger with venom is that it detracts from the MCU and it detracts from Spider-Man. So they've got to be very careful with it. Yeah. Stu? But don't you think, though, that if they could get Spider-Man in the Venom film, and I agree with you, it's never going to happen, but having massive Tom Hardy compared to little old Tom Holland would actually work really well for the comparison between Spider-Man and Venom. Yeah, but they've they've... That if it's not part of the MCU, then how's it going to work? Yeah, t- I, I agree, yeah. And I, I think it's almost something like I wish they wouldn't rush it to October. I wish they should say, right, in, we'll put it as part of Phase 4 or Phase 5. Mm. You know? Make that Spider-Man Homecoming 2 or whatever, but they're not. They're, it's, it's literally, it's coming out next October. And That's, it's going to be R-rated, isn't it? it yeah, it is, well, apparently you know, yeah, so. so. It is. That was another thing that I thought in regards to, I know that, that Spider-Man is supposed to be very sort of wisecracky. And it was, it was actually a comment that my wife said that she felt it felt a little bit like a clean version of uh, Deadpool as well, with the fact that he he was very Mm. wisecracky and obviously he wasn't swearing or there wasn't a lot of blood, but the way that, that, that Peter Parker as Deadpool was being all wisecracky, that that's what she's, she, that was one of her um, thoughts with it. It felt to her like it was very Deadpoolish. Right. But he wouldn't be sweary. Well, I no, mean, no, in, in real terms, yeah, it, it was never. I mean, he was, a, a, he was a fifteen-year-old boy, isn't it? Yeah, but I think that's. It's just interesting to hear from somebody that doesn't dissect these movies like we do mm. to have that thought rather than thinking, "Oh, he was a good Spider-Man." Yeah. The first thing she thought of was, oh, "It felt a bit like he was trying to be like a clean Deadpool." Right. Which I thought was a very interesting sort of thought in regards to you should come away thinking, "Wow, that was really good Spider-Man," instead of thinking of another superhero. But that's just some you know, one person's thought. Was, mm. uh, <laughs> you know, I was just there shaking my head. But it makes it sound like I'm coming down on it like I did with De- uh, Batman v Superman. And like like Rob said, or even Stu said, it wasn't as bad as Batman v Superman for me. I just went in with expectations and come out a little bit disappointed. Right. Well, talking of, Going back to the set pieces, Stu, did you enjoy those? I mean, were they good for you or not? Was I, it- I enjoyed the... Did you say it's the Washington one you mentioned? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, I enjoyed that. And again, I know I'm going to get like all over the coals for this. I'm of the school that didn't particularly like the ferry bit because it did feel too much like the train in Spider Man 2 for me. Um, other than that, uh, yeah, I, I, see, ah, I, I think <laughs> I'm going to have to go up in score, but I still didn't enjoy this, like Pavo, I didn't enjoy this film as much as I thought I was going to. Right. Right, I think it's time then we go around and see whether people have changed the scores. Uh, <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong theme tune there, pal. Um, Sorry, getting called. Yeah. So we'll... Uh, <laughs> Right, we'll go back round. Stu, I will go back to you first for your score. Are you going to up your score or are you going to stay the same? Okay, before I give you my score, can I just ask the three of you two questions about this film? Yeah. Number one, what is your favourite Spider-Man film to date? And number two, is the Vulture the best Spider-Man villain? 
In the films or in general? The films to date, yeah. In what we've seen in the films. Well, at the moment, I would say Spider-Man 2 still stands as maybe the strongest. And I really did like Doctor Octopus and that. But having only seen this one once, I want to see what it, how it holds up after multiple viewings and whether it will change my view. But at the mm. moment, it's still Spider-Man 2. Right, I'm going to go... The, the original Spider-Man I thought was really good. Um, that's probably my favourite Spider-Man movie. I will actually say that I think the Vulture is my favourite um, baddie. I did like that little twist that he was the father of the girl that she was that he was taking to the homecoming prom yeah. or whatever it was. And the moment, although again, it was most of it was in the trailer. He was proper menacing when he turned around and said. You know, I'm, I'm going to kill. I'll kill you and everybody that you love. Mm. And I think that would only have worked with someone like Michael Keaton because he's got that raspy, deep voice. That, mm. but he also he's got that look where he's looking menacing, but he's got a little bit of a smile in his. You know, it was like the bit when he grabs the gun and shoots the guy, and he thinks it's another gun and just evaporates. Yeah, <laughs> that was quite. Yeah, I was like, whoa, okay. So I do think there's a lot of potential there for that particular villain. Yeah, Rob. Uh, yes, this one is my favourite Spider-Man movie, and I like the Vulture a lot. But just thinking about it now, I'm going to say that my favourite Spider-Man villain so far is the OG Green Goblin, Willem Dafoe. Right. Okay. Despite the how bad the mask and the costume was, in general, he was uh, the the best villainous presence for me in a Spider-Man movie. And what about you, Stu? I'm with you, Neil. I still Spider-Man Two is my favourite, and Doc Ock my favourite villain. For me, Willem Dafoe was a good Green Goblin, but an absolutely abysmal... An abysmal what? Sorry, I missed that. Abysmal what? Uh, Abysmal Norman Osborn. Ah, right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right, so... Yeah. (laughs) Right, so scores then, Stu. Are you still the same? I'll go up to a three. Three toes up. Rob, are you still four and a half? Yeah. I'll stay a four. Pav? I can't believe I'm actually having something the same as Stu. I've got the same... I'm sticking with the three. Right, okay. I'm sticking with the three. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Let us know what you think. I just you're... did. I just told no, you. No, oh, everyone right. out there <laughs> listening to this. Let us know what you think on the Spider-Man film, whether it was a classic, whether it wasn't a classic. Please do comment below. I mean, it's obvious that I'm in, like, the minority with the way I feel because... 117 million on its opening weekend in America. It's obvious that a lot of people, and I don't think I've seen a a bad review or a negative review for one it One of the broadsheets did. I can't remember which one. Right. Somebody gave it quite a damning yeah. review. But there you go. That's but, why we love the movies. Yeah. So, this is it. This is the end. So, thank you very much, Rob, for joining us again. It's fun doing one of these. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Stu, all the way from uh, Stroud. Hey. <laughs> hey. and thank you very much Pav thank you and thank you very much everybody for watching and what's listening what's the next one what, is, what would be the next one do you reckon what's the next big one Dunkirk is that, is that the next big one or War of the Planet of the Apes but by the time I get to see it it would have been well and truly out yeah that's true that's true because that's out today or maybe Thor Thor Ragnarok in November that uh, could be yeah could be. Oh, we've got to do another one before then. We've got to do another one before then. Yeah, we, think... were just, we were just talking about this and uh, saying August is appalling for movies this year. Yeah. For releases. There's, I, don't, I can't even think of a well, movie. Well, maybe yet. Dunkirk. Do we, do we all like a good war movie? I've booked me IMAX tickets. I cannot wait Have you? for that. Stu? It's Christopher Nolan. It's got to be good, hasn't it? Maybe that'll be the next one. Then. Yeah, maybe. Set a date for the, uh, the IMAX and let's go and watch uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk-y. Right, well, thank you very much for listening and watching. We'll see you all again very soon for another Splawsome Spoilers. Thank you.